Hello again, everybody. Zack Attack is here with my WWE World Review for this Monday, October the 8th, 2018, from the All State Arena in Chicago, Illinois. Went to Chicago back in August for a vacation stop. Uh, got to go by a Cubs game, which is funny when it will be fun of later. And went to a Progress show in Cicero, Illinois. I got to meet Pete Don and Tyler Bay and Trent Seven. So it's kind of a fun experience, and Chicago fans all rowdy, as I saw in person, and of course saw tonight on this wall. Uh, coming out of Super Showdown, which I did end up seeing, like many others, but like everybody, mostly everybody, I did not stay up to five. I had to get up early, so I wasn't able to see it. Why that five? That's usually when I go to bed anyway. But I went to bed a little early because I get up at nine to set up a DJ gig, so I get to see you later. And it was a glorified house show, but it's some moments. Uh, favorite matches were definitely uh, AJ and Joe, probably the best of their series of matches. Some great spots and everything with them. And uh, Cedric, Cedric Alexander and uh, Buddy Murphy proving once again why people cannot sleep on Tour 5 Live. Great battle of the Michi No Kuta was the top, but the best part was Buddy Murphy won the Kuzway Championship. There was rumors there was going to be no title changes. I was like, really? Kuzma title match was the match I was looking forward to to see a title change from Australian winning. Which he won, and Iconics won. Wow, didn't see that coming. They're beating Oscar and Naomi. The burial continues. Um, the Shield match against Dogs of War, really good. Uh, um, really good six man. Sean and Becky loved it. Shitty ending. Setting up a match for SmackDown on Tuesday with a rule that Becky did not, cannot get DQ'd. She got DQ'd in a match against Charlotte in Australia. If she gets DQ'd again, she gets stripped of the title. Uh, SmackDown title match was great. With a decent opening ball against the New Day. And then that main event. Triple H against The Undertaker. Uh, it was okay. It wasn't as good as the other battles. I, I've been saying it. No one's been wanting this battle. I even asked for it. But hey, we're getting... We got this match. And a possible setup for another match was made. Uh, Triple H beat Taker. First time ever, Triple H finally beat Tucker. Um, he had a sledgehammer. He was trying to use the match. I'm, I, fe I kind of fell asleep in that match because I had to get up early, so I kind of dozed off during that match. But I saw oh, like, a little bit overbooked. A lot of interference from Kane and Shaw, especially when they made the match a no DQ match. Makes sense. And then the match ended with all four guys uh, apparently shaking hands and showing respect, but then Kane and Tucker turned on Triple H and Sean, double choke slamming them. Which would and tombstoning him too, which would lead to the opening of the night's wall. A decent wall. Great action here. Uh, there was a great main event, all that on wall. Even though it was kind of like night of matches. But eh, decent ones at that. So we would have Drip Rates and Sean come out to address the actions of Mayor Kane, of course, Mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, and the Undertaker. About what happened at Super Showdown and preparing people for what many people, including myself, we well, thinking about since this match was announced, especially when Edgar confronted Sean a few weeks ago about Sean possibly coming out of retirement for a possible match, a tag match. And it was set up at the show in Australia with the ending of the match with Taker and Kane turning on Sean and Triple H, so it's official at Super Showdown's follow up, the Saudi Arabia show of Crown Royal. We would have Triple H and Sean DX reunion semi against the Brothers of Destruction. Now, yes, attitude nostalgia kicks are cool. But this doesn't need to happen, but hey, it's you know, good old kick. The match in Australia was okay. Briefly in starting with the match is a little better. But we'll see how that goes. Uh they did a DX thing, the DX thing came out, they had different shirts on, but they whipped them up and yanked to the wheel these new DX shirts they made. So there you go. Lots of build for a lot of shows. We had build tonight for Crown Royal. And also we gotta get ready for evolution now. Evolution is a news to read. No, that, that evolution, the one that's going to be on SmackDown next week, with Batista, who finally got invited, and returning with Mysterio as well. No, we get the women's pay per view to promote Evolution. And uh, we would open things up. First off, before we get to some women's stuff, we had a lot of women's stuff tonight. We had Bobby Lashley against Kevin Owens. I've been liking Leo Wash as a mouthpiece, but in the beginning of this match, I was like, maybe it was a mistake. Trying to be like Abraham Washington without the Kobe Bryant jokes. 
During the match between D-Bye, uh, not D-Bye, <laughs> but I don't know why I said D-Bye. By the way, he won against Miz. Shitty ending to that one. Wow. Not a build that three minutes and a sudden roll up from D-Bye. I know they're trying to cut time to give Taker and Triple H five, 15 minutes, especially they need all the time for their entrances because they're so fucking long. And Pyro. We had Pyro on the show in Australia. But that was a shitty ending. Miz and D-Bye. So we had Lashley and KO. It was an okay match. You know, all these two have little problems and stuff, especially this is the reason why, apparently, why KO quit and came back. And Leo Walsh, like I said, was being like Abraham Washington because he was on the live mic the entire match. Like, come on, Bobby! I'm trying to get the crowd to chant for Bobby Lashley. Now, this is Chicago, after all. Who can turn on anyone in a dime? So, this started booing Leo Walsh every time. like, Bobby Lashley! That boos! So, Leo Walsh was the intention to be a heel. Well, it kind of was, as we would see by the end of this match here. Uh, Leo Walsh did get chased around a bit by KO. And Lashley would try to capitalize on it. A couple of times. But then, uh, after the Leo was stuff, uh, Lashley did set up the vertical suplex, but, oh, if we got out of it, the fans were definitely on the side of KO, especially after, uh, the actions of Leo Wash made people want to boo him. Uh, Owens did try to go for the Papa Power Bomb, and more only was trying to go for the, uh, Fog Splash, but then he got distracted again by Leo Wash. And, uh, with that, he got tied up in the tree of wall by Lashley. Got slammed back down and got a dominate a C4. I thought it was a dominator, but it was a C4 for the victory for Bobby Lashley. And now we know why Leo Watch was doing what he did. It was a heel turn. First of two. As Lashley would beat down Owens. And Leo Watch was just cheering him on. So apparently Kale's a baby face for the first time in his WWE career as a baby face. So it's kinda of, kinda of weird to see him as a baby face. Of how they're gonna work it out. You know, he had such great potential with the quit angle, you know, a few weeks back that they fucked it up by having him come back within a week, not milking it for for what it's worth, you know, waiting only a week to bring him back, not like a month. But now he's going to be a big fan against Lashley, so we'll see how this angle turns out. But I'm happy that Lashley's turning heel, he's had a so-so one in the company since he's returned, it's been kind of, yeah. But now, I've likely Leo watched his mouthpiece before, but now that he's a heel, they're going to milk this heel turn as much as they can as they interrupted an interview involving Finn Balor and Bailey right after this. So, they're kind of milking this heel thing. But now, what leaves of Elias, who is a tag team partner of KO's against Lashley, who I think people were suspecting Lashley was going to turn heel on John Cena, and also another big turn that was saved for tonight. But we're like, hey, it's a glorified house show. It's not going to have big things happen on these ho this sort of house show that's on the network besides the title change for the Cruiserweight Championship. But we did see Elias come out to sing a song. Talking about his defeat at the hands of John Cena and Lashley before Lashley turned heel at Super Showdown in Australia and making fun of Chicago. Talking about, you know, you know, I got distracted by Australian accents. And John Cena's hair, that was a big joke, was Cena's hair. Uh, apparently he grew his hair out for a movie with Jackie Chan. That's why we didn't see him do a lot of bumps. Uh, he's still shooting the movie in China. In China! With uh, Jackie Chan. So that's why he didn't take a lot of bumps in like, the last few minutes of the match. He came in with the sixth move of doom. And that's how the lines got pinned. Anyway. And then he's like, all the Australian food made me sick. Oh, they all thought I got a disease. But I'm now feeling good because the Cubs didn't make the word seaweeds. Making fun of the fact the Cubbies lost the wild card game last week against the Colorado Rockies. And I've been to Chicago, like I just said in the beginning, and I've been to Bi Weekly Field, which was an amazing experience to be there. I didn't go to a game. Like, a game was going on, but I didn't go in. I just hung out outside the stadium. It was crazy being there for a Cubs game. You know, got the asses kicked by Washington Nationals. So then, as he was singing the song, still got interrupted. Status quo for Elias segment. Interruption. As we see, one, the Wells come out. For a first of two, we had a lot of weed. What does WWE stand for? Walk with Elias. Sorry, my dad. Sorry, me. Sorry, we got to do what WWE stands for. He did say that in promo. But it's kind of cool. He's had these interactions lately. You know, he's not having anything, like, legit or anything long-term when it comes to a long-term rival. 
and these interactions with people like Joe Stratus, McFoley, and now Ronda Rousey intersecting herself as she's preparing for the first of two of the rematches from Super Showdown. Uh, we did like a, a ton of rematches from weeks past, but two specific rematches from Super Showdown. First of them was Ronda Rousey with the Bella Twins taking on the Ruby Wyatt squad. Uh, okay, little six moment. I uh, like the match in Australia. The Wyatt squad got a lot of hits in, especially Liv wanted to get a piece of Brie Bella for obvious reasons for concussing her. And I'm glad Liv was cleared, not just for the night, but also for the show in Australia. So I'm glad for that. So uh, after the Liv Morgan onslaught onto Brie, they got the big tag in. Got some big moves in before it came down to Wowsy getting another hot tag. And destroying Ruby Wyatt for a bit. With some big moves. And... But then uh, the Bellatrix started to come back to take down Morgan and Logan. And preventing them from stopping Wanda from the finish. As she would deliver the own bar onto Ruby Wyatt. I think she was in a triple on the show on Saturday. But she did it on board a... Ruby with Liv and Sarah helpless. Ruby tapped out and the victory went to Wanda and the Bella Twins. But the heel turn we thought was going to be in Australia was saved for tonight. As there's been rumors about Nikki Bella turning on Wowsy ever since SummerSlam when they became fast friends. Leading towards a powerful match between Wowsy and Nikki at Evolution. Where the setup was finally made tonight. Like I said, some people like myself thought it was going to be on Australia. But it's a glorified house show, so they saved it for a while. After the celebration, Nikki and Bree both beat down on Ronda, beat her up in the ring, and beat her outside the ring. Nailing gets the steps. It was just a beat down. Probably the most heelish Bella move I've seen in a recent amount of time. Make fun of the Bellas all you want. But their lack of wrestling ability and tendency to injure people like Bree. And their bad acting. But they were de devilish heels here. The bad mean girl heels that they have been in. They haven't been like a mean girl heel in a long time. So they're being the mean girl heels taking out Wowsy. Wowsy did try to fight back, but the numbers game did caught up to her as she was left lane by the Bella Twins. And it is official. They did announce Wowsy was going to defend her title at Evolution on the show in Australia, but not her opponent. Well, it is Nikki Bella. So uh, there you go. The first of many build. Segments for the Evolution pay-per-view. We'll get to another one in a minute. Speaking of building, not only were we hyping the Evolution pay-per-view, hyping up Crown Royal, we're also hyping up the Mixed Match Challenge. Nice integration of Mixed Match Challenge as we had another rematch. This time from last week's Mixed Match Challenge, as Team B and B, Bailey and Bauer, teamed up against Mahalisha. Alicia Fox and Jinder Mahal. Like I guess it was a rematch from the match on Mixed Match Challenge. I thought it was a little bit more funnier than the one on uh, the, on Tuesday. There was kind of cool spots. Like Bailey did attack Jinder at one point, and she even got the spear of Sunil Singh. But the tension between Mahalisha's team continued as Alicia was taken care of by Bailey. The ending came in a decent, okay matchup with Finn Balor eventually delivering big moves on the Jinder. Leading up to the coup de gras and the victory. So, okay little match. Good little build. At least good integration into the morning mix match challenge. Not just having the mix matches, mix tag matches for the show. But doing mix match tags on wall as well. Even though it's a Wii match. But still. At least they had some integration there. So, after that, we're on to our next situation. The Global, war, uh, global Battle Royal. To determine who will qualify for the World Cup event, the World Cup event that will take place in Saudi Arabia. They're starting to hype that up. Uh, Cena, since he's fucking Cena, he qualifies automatically. Uh, SmackDown has two qualifying matches uh, this week, including one that's completely fucking random out of fucking nowhere. We have the Big Show back for some reason on uh, SmackDown. No explanation there. A last minute shakeup. As he takes on Wayne Orton. And then Jeff Hardy would take on some more Joe. But we have the second wall superstar to qualify. And we found out who that was in this so called global battle royal put together by anti general manager Aaron Corbin. There was a bunch of local talent in there, all saying they're from foreign countries, including one with probably the coolest name of them all, the Sultan of Shauna. And I actually know who that is. 
because I go to a lot of indie shows, specifically in Detroit and the Midwest. Uh, his real name is Ibris Abraham. I met him. I've seen him West. Uh, uh, he's with, I don't know if you can see him that good. But his hair is tied up here, but his it, afro is that long in person. It's, it's that big. It's that big in person. That afro. He had it on that hat. And I saw I was like, is that Ibris Abraham? That's cool. You know, I've seen him West in the Midwest, uh, in Detroit for XICW. Uh, for the City Wrestling, he wrestled for TNA for a bit. And he just did an event for Border City Wrestling with TNA on Saturday. Team up with that other guy I showed you with him, Joe Coleman, against David Arquette of all people. And now he's in Chicago on Wall. So it's cool for Ebris. He's a decent wrestler, great heel. Great to see him, even though it's a Jamba Will. Great for Ebris Abraham to be on Monday Night Wall tonight. Awesome to see him on there. So I kind of mocked out. I was like, yeah, I know that guy. I knew he was a man. So Barry put himself in this match, representing the U.S. with a guy that almost looked like El Generico. I was like, something's going to happen in this match. Something goofy is going to happen. There's got to be some sort of payoff to this stupid match. Like some return or something. And we look to the luchador. Uh, Los Candistador. So, uh, uh, the Candistador stood out of the way. Like he didn't get on the man. Everyone was going for Corbin to begin with. It was like a Okay, well, as a match, Battle oil, typical Battle oil stuff, but the ending was what made it worth this segment, and the fact we saw Eva's Abraham on My Night Walk, that was cool. Anyway, uh, Corbin eventually eliminated everybody, but the Conquistador, and then I, I didn't really pay attention at first, then I looked at the guy, and the shape of his head, I was like, uh-oh, Being especially reading the dirt sheets lately about... Possible scenarios for Survivor Series and reading who was backstage on Water Night. I was like, oh, I know that is. There, there is going to be something cool with this. Uh, the Condiza Lord came back in, suplexed the fuck out of Corbin, eliminated Corbin, and unmasked himself to reveal himself as the former Wall General Manager, Kurt Angle, back from his, well, sort of back from vacation. He will be the second Wall participant in the Crown Royal and also building up some long term booking. For Survivor Series, I read that they are not doing a Wall vs. SmackDown themed event for Survivor Series like they've done the last couple of years, have brand on brand action, but core brand matches, including a possible Team Angle against Team Corbin for control of Wall. So, this is kind of the start of that feud. We're waiting for an Angle comeback, and now we got it. He screwed Corbin on this match, disguised as Los Conquistador, kind of shouting out. His friends, Edge and Christian, who also disguised himself as Los Conquistador, Los Conquistador in the past. So that was kind of a cool shout out to them. So that was cool. So great. Just the moment was great. The match was an okay little sloppy battle royal. If only for the best part to see Ebus Abraham in it. So I kind of mocked out for that one. So now on to a match involving Emma Moon. And she's taking advantage of some big opportunities. Team up with Braun Strowman because of Alexa Bliss's injury. But Bliss was focusing on getting healthy for Evolution. We'll get to her in a minute because we got a segment involving her. After this match with Ember 2 0 with Braun. You know, great opportunity for her to be on there and being used. She's in a match tonight against Nia Jax. I fear the worst. I'm like, Ember's got some momentum being in the next match challenge with Braun, the 2 0. Taking on Balor and Bailey on Tuesday, on, on tomorrow's edition of the show, which they'll likely lose, Balor and Bailey. But uh, it was an okay match. Uh, of course, the story was the. It was a. a the immutable, immutable object. The force be the immutable object. Immutable object. Because, of course, Big uh, Nia was using flowing away right around, just destroying uh, Ember in an okay little showing until Nia would eventually get tossed out of the ring. And uh, Ember tried two dives, two, two suicide dives, and could not take Nia down. But they brought on the outside a bit at the second dive. Couldn't take Big Nia down, but Nia did get taken down as Ember slammed her against the uh, wing apron, against the LED screen apron, and got back in the ring before we got the count of 10 in. I was like, shit, we're going to get a double count out? No, just a count out. So we had a, kind of a screwy ending, but at least not only does it give Amber a victory over a former Raw Women's Champion, 
but also kind of protects Naya from getting pain here. Maybe a rematch at Evolution? Who knows? Speaking of Evolution, we saw a build-up last week starting for a match involving Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus with the Moment of Bliss segment. Talking about how Bliss was 7 years old when she attempted to meet Trish outside of a show. Now, she was 7 in 1998. Trish debuted in 2000. A lot of people called out Bliss for her bad math, including Trish in this promo. She called out Bliss, trying to do a moment of satisfaction, but then Bliss came out, and they had a little ball, and we also had Mickey James with her. They kind of mentioned the fact that Trish did lose to uh, Mickey James in Chicago at Mania 22. This aside, of course, this is still bleeped. This is still bleeping on that book when Nick, Mickey James did this. He kind of bleeped that. <laughs> Don't bang me on. Don't flag me, please. I was doing this. No, don't flag me for shit. <laughs> this morning, me feel. I said, for like a second, I'm not in a, that inappropriate. Anyway, um, Trish challenged Bliss to come down to the ring before a brawl would ensue. Mickey James talked to Alexa, saying, How can we have a match at Evolution? A tag match. So Trish brought out her partner, Lita, so we have a little bit of a change in the card. We were supposed to get two individual matches involving Bliss against Trish and uh, Mickey James against Lita. Now we have absorbed those two matches. And now we have a tag match now. Bliss and Mickey against Trish and Lita. So the legends, the Hall of Famers, would scurry Bliss and Mickey out of the ring in a beatdown. So there you go. Um, I wanted to see Trish and Bliss one-on-one, -on -one, to be honest with you. I know Trish, uh, a Blitz is the best wrestler in the world. She's a great, decent worker. And of course, a great heel, a great talker. Even though know, she kind of struggled tonight, and the fans kind of let her know it. Until the Lita appearance, which everyone walked out for, and I heard she was backstage alongside Trish. I knew they were going to set up, continue to set up in the matches against Mickey and Bliss. Now it's a tag match. So I was actually looking forward to seeing Trish against Bliss one on one. I hope they get a chance to do it again one day. I don't know why. Maybe it's because no, and no one liked the Lick, the Lena Mickey match that was booked. Some people thought it was a random, like that match went okay. But I, I'm more sad about losing Trish and Bliss as a one on one match because I am a long time Trish fan. She's my all time favorite women's wrestler, and Bliss is my new favorite. So I was looking forward to seeing them face off one on one. But at least they're gonna face off somewhat in a tag match. Maybe they, maybe they wanted to combine these two because of not many people into the Lena. Mickey match, or because of Bliss's injury that she apparently sustained to keep her out of mixed match challenge, maybe as an excuse to get arrested for this event, or the fact they want more ticket sales and decided, hey, the ticket sales ain't doing too good for Evolution. Let's just make a match, a tag match. Maybe that'll make people buy tickets, seeing Trish against Trish and Lena team up. But don't they see the ratings these days? The continuous rematches and, of course, the reliance on legends. Even with Triple H and Tanker, Walter had bad ratings last week. So, there you go with that scenario. Speaking of DX legends, uh, they uh, they got a DX integration by having the DX sign spray paint over the WWE's Twitter handle. And probably on the Facebook one, too. But now on to our next affair, a taxi match. Stemming from, of course, a series of singles matches as Bobby Roode and Jack Gable would try to avenge their singles losses against kind of all people from the Ascension. So we have this tag match that we've seen Roode and Gable win. This is the feud that doesn't end. We'll go on and on, my friend. So we had a tag match a few weeks back. Then had singles matches with Gable winning. But then Gable and Roode losing to Connor in consecutive weeks. So, the sense was feeling momentum. It is okay, a little tag team affair. With uh, them beating down Wood for the early going. But there's, of course, continuing kind of scene building for possible heel turn of Gable being overzealous and blindsiding himself a few times in the match. Including the ending, as Wood came in after a hot tag and a house of fire, doing some big moves, a spine buster, trying to tease the glorious DD team. He got blind tagged out again by Gable. 
Wood was not happy because he had the win at hand, but Gable would eventually destroy Victor with a chaos theory and the victory. So Gable got the victory, but Wood was not happy about Gable's by tagging himself in, taking in all the glorious of the glory win. Pun the pun there. When Wood had things at hand. So, might be some tension there. Of course, teaching some tension with both the big main event teams. But then after that, we had the AOP come out. Capitalized from their little momentum they were doing. Uh, they beat down the beat team in Revival last week. And like they did then, they also came down to beat down both the Ascension and Gable and Wood. And they eventually do a super double collider onto Victor and Gable. So, AOP. Big push for the tag titles eventually, you know, beating down all these teams. So, at least they're kind of building them up a little bit with, of course, Drake Maverick as their odd manager. So, there's that. Now, before the main event, we have a surprise appearance. I didn't know he was backstage because I read that Trish was backstage, Lena was backstage, Angle was backstage. I don't know what they were using Angle for until I saw the Battle Royal. Uh, I didn't know Paul Heyman was apparently backstage. Of course, he was building towards the fact that Brock, Brock Lesnar would be in a triple threat match in Saudi Arabia on November 2nd in a triple threat against both Roman and Strowman for the Universal Championship. They're talking about the main event tonight with the tension with both teams. Of course, there's been questioning alliance with uh, Dean Ambrose. There was a spot in the match on Saturday that uh, Dean got taken down by Roman at one point and they're like, kind of angling him on the apron with the dogs, like dogs were surrounding Roman at one point in the match. And then Ambrose got at the same time, like, is he going to hit him? Nope. Eventually, stay with his brothers. So does that dissension still hinted? And also, stemming from last week as well, uh, of course, Strowman calling out both Drew and Dolph, specifically Dolph for being a weak link, especially since Dolph did not not only lost a singles match against Roman Reigns last week, he also ate the pin in Australia. So a lot of tension was built with these two teams from within as we got to our great main event. Uh, not as good as their match in Australia, but hey, they couldn't do the big spots like they did with the beatdown before the match and the barricade spear from Roman to Strowman. They just flew for 14 hours. So... They, it was still a very high octane match. Various spots, too many to name, and a very chaotic main event. Uh, some of the best spots in the match. Uh, Roman was, of course, being booed as usual. The entire team got cheered, but of course, when Roman came out, he got booed. So uh, he tried to take down Strowman a little bit, even trying to drop a few times, but eventually got it when he nailed Strowman against the post and did get the small drop on him, and then a hot tag to. Wallens, and we saw a lot of dives. We did see uh, uh, Wallens and Ambrose. That was a good spot when they did a double suicide dive onto Drew and Dolph. But then uh, Woman came out with a big fly move of his own, taking out Strom and everybody. Uh, another spot was as there was a big ball with all six guys. Uh, Drew's friend Dolph Ziggler and Wallens kind of double close on each other over the top rope. They had a rough landing on the next. Hope they didn't get hurt too bad. That was kind of a, that looked like a rough landing. So well, that was a great spot there. And then Ambrose got the hot tag in. He took down Storm with some big moves, trying to take him down. He was choosing dirty deeds at one point. Uh, I think it was him and Drew actually. Him and Drew were lingo. But then a Strowman at one point did try to ease a slam onto Roman. But then Ambrose would try to make the save with a dive. He got caught, and then Roman speared. Storm it on the outside there. Or actually, avoided the Superman punch. But after he caught Ambrose off the dive, Ambrose counted with a great DDT. And then that's where we did the Storm and Spear from Reigns. And then Ambrose got back in the ring with all that distraction from the outside. He ate a claymore from Drew in the ring. And the 1 2 3 victory for the Dogs of War. 50 50 booking reigns again. We had the Shield win on Saturday. And the Dogs of War, Ambrose's enemies with Wallens and uh, Roman. Storm and Dolph and Drew got their heat back by winning. And Dolph did not get the pin. He didn't get pinned, but Drew got the win. 
But more importantly, the animals got pinned. So as the dogs all walked away, all three members of the shield were healing their wounds, and then Ambrose just walked off, walked up, and walked away. Got up and walked away. That's how he end war. Dean walking alone back to the Titan Tron, leaving his two brothers broken and battered in the ring. Great way to end it. Continuing to question the allegiance of Dean Ambrose. Is it going to be a heel turn? I thought there might be a heel turn tonight, especially with Paul Heyman in the building. Can we see a new Paul Heyman guy? But we didn't see anything like that. But the teasing continues where possible. Ambrose heel turn. Maybe they'll do a swerve, make it a Wallens heel turn. But we've seen him turn on the shield before. Four years ago. So we'll see what direction this takes. But great way to end walk with a great main event. And a great way to end it overall. With the continuing questions involving Dean's allegiance. With him walking away from the shield after he got pinned. So see how this is addressed next week. So with that, thank you so much for watching. With that, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See you next time. Bye-bye.